Well, greetings, viewers and voyeurs. We've got that funk. How you doing? I'm out here in the uh, beautiful sunshine, beautiful autumn weather, all the trees changing color. It's really, really nice. And uh, it's with this backdrop that I have to concede in the battle rap I was having with Soretta Yuki. I have been bested. I have been beaten. I have been defeated. I've been destroyed, demolished, annihilated, uh, but not humiliated. You don't possess that kind of power. But yeah, fair play to you, boy. Uh, you know, I cannot uh, do anything other than concede graciously without even trying to be clever about it or, or you know, make some sort of snide remark about how, you know, you didn't really win. Because, of course, you did. Any objective observer would agree that you won and I lost. So, anyway, there. Uh, now, to the most of my audience who has never seen me to be anything close to humble before, and that's probably as close as you'll ever get. So, uh, you remember this video for a long time, I hope. <laughs> anyway, right, so the, the meat and substance of this video is about psychedelics in general. Um, about a month ago or so, um, across London, I went to a, a lecture um, held by the Psychedelic Society, and there were two speakers scheduled to speak. One was Graham Hancock, who's pretty famous as an author, and he's made some documentaries, series, and so on as well. And uh, the other guy is Dave Pierce, who I wasn't particularly familiar with, but Dave Pierce, uh, if you ask me, uh, you know, I, I could be jumping to conclusions based on the fact that it was a psychedelic society meeting, but uh, Dave Pierce was there, and then right before he was due to speak, or, or right before the event was due to kick off, he kind of freaked out because it was oversold by like 200 tickets, and there were like 200 people in an overspill room, and I think that, that he just got intimidated by the crowd and left. So I kind of suspected that maybe he was tripping at the time and, and had a little panic moment there, but of course I don't know that. Anyway, Graham Hancock spoke, and he took up a whole hour instead of half an hour. And I've seen Graham Hancock before. I've met him in person. I find him an interesting person. And, uh, you know, I, I, I hold his theories with a, a great deal of skepticism. But at the same time, you know, uh, he's done an awful lot of traveling. And, uh, and, you know, he's seen things up close and personal that I've never seen. So I reserve judgment overall. Anyways, but he's an interesting person, especially when it comes to talking about psychedelics. Now... For those of you who don't already know this about me, I was, have been, will be, am, I guess, whatever, a psychonaut. You know, I have enjoyed tweaking my consciousness uh, here and there throughout the years. And um, I'm not sure if I'll ever be finished with it, but you can't do that kind of thing too often because you can't lose your grip on reality. And if you do it too often, you will lose your grip on reality, you know. So, but I find it interesting because one of the things that uh, Graham Hancock said, which I both agree with and disagree with, is that uh, you know if everybody more people uh, took psychedelics uh, people who were you know mentally stable and could handle it for sure anyway took psychedelics that uh, our society would would benefit from that because uh, you know it would open up a lot of people's minds now I absolutely agree that it would open up a lot of people's minds um, doing psychedelics mushrooms or acid in particular uh, you know once you've opened that door you can never go back uh, you, you it changes the way you look at reality even though you know you're hallucinating, um, it's like losing your virginity. Uh, there's a part of you which just, just, you can't see things the same way. You know that there's more texture, more depth. There's a behind to everything. Um, and it's really difficult to shake that feeling, even if you know it's drug-induced. And so anyway, uh, so I would agree that, uh, you know, people would benefit from having their minds opened and it would open people's minds, but I don't necessarily come to the conclusion that it would lead to kumbaya. You know, uh, but what it does do for sure is it makes you realize that, uh, you know, happiness is one of the most important things in living. And it's very easy for us to get distracted from that. And we also are sold happiness in the sense that um, we have been conditioned to think that happiness is something that you can produce and consume rather than a state of being per se. And I think uh, it's certainly a byproduct of doing psychedelics that you realize that happiness is, is up to you and it's an approach to living and blah, 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 blah. And uh, even if you only do psychedelics once, once you sort of have this offered to you in a sort of tangible internal way, it never totally goes away in my opinion. So there's that. So uh, I, I found it really interesting though how um, I didn't really realize how many so sort of psychonauts there are in my sort of age group, you know. I'm in my early 50s and for sure, there was about five or six hundred people in the event, and for sure, the majority of them were definitely over 35. Um, a lot of them were my sort of age and even older. 
And uh, I found it interesting as well because uh, there's a hallucinogenic that is grown in South America called ayahuasca. I might have pronounced that wrong. But uh, ayahuasca is extremely powerful and its active ingredient is DMT, which is among the most psychedelic substances on earth. And what people do is they brew it up and they take it in, in, in like the rainforest in South America. And uh, you have like an immense sort of spiritual psychedelic journey. Oftentimes it starts with a purge, you know, the, the ayahuasca makes you sick and you purge everything that you've got inside you out and sort of have a little freaky bad trip for a while there and then all this you get through that into the good trip I mean that's what I've seen in documentaries they didn't really discuss the bad pukey aspect of it in the psychedelic society but what I was interested in was the fact that when Graham Hancock asked the crowd so how many people here have tried Aroxa well over a third raised their hands which I was pretty surprised by I, you know because as far as I know you do have to go to South America for it I don't think it's been imported I don't think, uh, you know, I think it's quite difficult to produce um, and so forth. So, yeah, it was rather surprising and revealed a sort of dedication to tripping amongst the people who raised their hands because, you know, if you're going to go all the way to South America um, and then experiment with that, that shows a certain level of dedication and, uh, and, and a love of tripping. And, um, yeah, I just found it really, really interesting. Uh, he mentioned DMT an awful lot in his lecture and talked about how he had uh, done DMT and various experiences he had on DMT and you know DMT as far as I'm concerned is, is the most beautiful experience you can have artificially um, but at the same time that yeah, that's what it is though you know it's, it's not like more substantive sort of revelatory psychedelic experiences that you can have so much as it is just mind-blowingly awesome beauty that you can't possibly possibly comprehend or explain <laughs> yeah Anyway, um, so yeah, Psychedelic Society, quite interesting, but uh, what do you people think? Do you think that uh, there is such a thing as good drugs? Um, I find it interesting how a lot of people who are into psychedelics, I don't personally put myself in this category, but I understand how people come to think like this. They seem to think that psychedelics are in a category different to other drugs because, you know, you can, you can use, in quotation marks, psychedelic drugs uh, for intellectual and spiritual exploration uh, whereas you know speedy drugs just make you make your body go snappy and you know doesn't it, it's not the same and then uh, you know slow you down drugs is, again it's not the same I mean you can hallucinate on some of them like ketamine for example but it's not the same it's not like you have these massive revelations and and uh, you know this connection with nature or the universe that you can have on mushrooms or LSD Anyway, so that's my video. What do you guys think about the Psychedelic Society? It's a group which is growing. I think there's already over half a million people uh, subscribed to it in the UK, and I'm pretty sure there's one in America as well. Um, if, if I can find it, I'll link it in the uh, description box below and let you people learn more if you're interested. Thanks for watching this video. Sereti Yuki, once again, congratulations. And uh, to everybody, may all your ups and downs be ups.